Oi friends, Rin here. So today I want to talk about persona builds, right? This will be a guide for new players and those who actually play with me because after what I saw in rank, I feel like I need to make this guide because I was waiting for Priest to get knocked so we can pop that last cypher. And when she got knocked, you know, when we're playing randoms, I swear to God. Anyways, we're playing and she gets knocked and we pop that last cypher and she's still on the ground sleeping. I just don't understand why we still don't have borrowed time. Like what other persona can you actually bring instead of borrow time. Like, mmm. Anyway, so this guy is for new players and those who are playing with me. If you're playing with me, definitely do watch this. I swear, you better watch this. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about two persona builds, okay? They're considered general persona builds is because they can be applied to any character that you want and still enhance your gameplay, okay? The thing about these two persona builds is that they have one key component. They both have borrow time. Now, I cannot stress this enough, guys. Borrow time is that important throughout the whole game because your teammates expect you to have borrow time when you kite. So when you get knocked again, they pop that last cypher and they expect you to kite a bit longer so they can actually escape. Now, if you don't have this, you can really screw up the gameplay for your yourself and the team. So I'm not talking about casual, okay? You guys can do whatever you want in casual, but I'm talking about rank or fight here. Borrow time is very important. Like... Okay, calm down. <laughs> okay, so we're the first persona build we're gonna talk about is like we're we're assuming you're gonna kite or the along the lines of that or something like that. Okay, so what you want is borrow time. Obviously, we just talked about this. Now you're gonna go fully left and get broken windows. Now you have broken windows. You obviously have knee jerk reflex. Okay, so what this line does is that with broken windows, you can vault windows and get an increased movement speed to gain more distance from the hunter when you're kiting. Same thing for knee jerk reflex. This will allow you to vault pallets and gain a movement speed increase for a bit. Now, so that's assuming you're kiting really quick. Now, what you want next is exit path. Exit path is really important because you want to pick yourself up, right? When you're knocked, you're trying to pick yourself up, right? If you don't have exit path, you cannot pick yourself back up. So that's pretty important that you need this. Next, you want Survivor's Instinct. Now, Survivor's Instinct is that in case you cannot get that win, you can still go for that tie. Survivor's Instinct increase your decoding speed, right? So let's say one player die, they increase your decoding speed by 5%, then it get multiplied up to 15% when another player dies, then 30% when three player dies. But after three player dies, is it really worth decoding with that 30% anymore? You should probably be fighting the dungeon at that point. But Survivor's Instinct is important for going that for that tie when one player dies. Wait, did that rhyme? I don't know. Anyways, so next you want is Sticker. Sticker is really important because in case you're not being chased and you are trying to help a survivor and you accidentally get knocked, I don't know why, but let's say you get knocked or something, right? So Sticker actually helps you get up faster, like heal yourself from the ground faster, and then it can actually help you pick yourself up, which is pretty good. Now, you only need level 1 of this, okay? Now, we have 20 remaining points, okay? Now, we're going to talk about, let's say that you're playing with randoms. Now, when you're playing with randoms, this is really important, okay? What you want is snooze. Now, let me explain. That 3% chair time doesn't seem, 3% uh, longer chair time doesn't seem like much, but it actually can change the game, okay? When you are playing with randoms, they are going to argue over who's going to save. And then they, oh my god, some things in my... Sorry. There, oh my. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh my god. Okay. So they're going to argue over who is saving, okay? Now, when they're arguing over who's saving, you're about to die now. It's going to pass the line or something. And they're going to argue and confuse themselves and end up, no one's going to actually save you and you're probably going to die. I know it's really simple. You're probably thinking, oh yeah, the saver is going to go save. Sometimes that doesn't even happen. They just let you die. It's, it's really weird, okay? So definitely do have longer chair time snooze, okay? So that level one can change the outcome. Now you have 10 remaining points, okay? What you want now is distress. Now, <laughs> distress is important, remember? When they're arguing over who's saving you, it might be much easier if you have distress because now they can see who's actually saving you. So if one person doesn't go save you, someone else can actually go save you, which make it life easier for everyone else because you guys can't communicate. So just, just yeah, bring distress. Now, let's assume that you are not playing with randoms, okay? That you're playing with a friend or something. You can get rid of distress and you can actually get healing. 
Healing level 1 and Sticker level 2. Now this is a really good Persona build because if you're playing with a friend, Sticker can increase like a lot to get you back up, okay? Now healing is in case the hunter switches and no longer goes for you. And now your teammate can actually heal you up, okay? You know, sometimes hunter just knock you and chair you, then they teleport away and try to go for another hunter. So in case this happens, it's really important that you have this kind of healing trait. So this is the first persona build that I would recommend and it's really good. You guys should try it out and let me know what you guys think. It's really helpful to me when I'm kiting around. Okay, so the next persona build is for the saviors of the team. I'm talking about that players that are saving another survivor from the chair. Now, this is a really good persona build for you. So definitely do watch if you're playing like mercenary, first officer, or wilding. Well, I don't I don't know why you guys are still playing wilding, but I'll let that slide for now. Anyway, so we have a clean slate again of a remaining of 120 points, okay? If you guys do not have 120 points, that means you guys are still new to the game and you need to play a few more games and get that 120 points, then come back to this guide and watch it. So, we have borrow time. We need borrow time. I cannot stress this anymore, guys. Like, you really need borrow time. Next, as a savior, you need Ty Turner, okay? When you save someone from a chair, in case they get hit again, they cannot be knocked now because they have something called last effort. So they cannot be knocked for another 20 seconds, okay? So I know 20 seconds doesn't seem like a long time, but this can change the course of the game. That 20 seconds can help you finish that last cyber pop and save that four person. 20 seconds is a lot of time in a match. So definitely do get Ty Turner. So next, you want another essential trait, Exit Path. Now Exit Path is in case you get knocked as a savior or something when you save, you know, bad stuff happens sometimes, okay? So exit path can help you get yourself back up in case you get knocked so your teammates don't have to waste their time coming to you and healing you, okay? So you can just heal yourself while they keep on ciphering. Now, next you need another essential trait, Survivor's Instinct, okay? Like I said before, if you guys cannot go for that win, still go for that tie. It's always better than a lose. So do not give, on, give up on hope when you're already losing one player. There can be a different outcome if you try your best. Now, next you need healing. Healing is an important trait for saviors because most likely chance you will get hit from saving or even worse, you're going to get knocked. So in case you, this does happen and you need to be healed, your teammates can heal you a lot faster and don't have to waste too much time on healing you while they can just be ciphering. Now you need sticker. <laughs> now sticker, I cannot stress this enough to so many people I talk to that play mercenary, okay? As a mercenary, you need sticker or whatever, okay? Like even if you're a first officer, you need sticker, okay? This will help you heal yourself back up faster when you're on the ground. Now mercenary, Without Sticker, he take like 30 years to heal. Like, by the time he heals himself up, the match is over. Rank is over. Everyone's asleep. No one's even even the, in the match anymore. Mercenary is the only one in the match. You're the only player in the match. I don't care. You need Sticker, okay? With Sticker, there's a huge difference in healing time. If you guys compare healing yourself with Sticker and without Sticker, you're going to see a major difference. So, as a savior, you definitely need... As a savior, you definitely need Sticker. Now, we only have 10 points left, okay? Now, I recommend getting Doctor. Now, why don't I just get Healing Level 2, and why do I just get Doctor instead? Well, Healing Level 2 is only 5% more. If you get Doctor, it's a 15% increase from healing from injury and healing others. So that's a very good trait. So you rather have 15% than 5%. It's a pretty obvious reasoning, right? So anyways... That will help you in case something happens and you can no longer save or you need to heal a teammate and you can heal each other really quickly back up. So that's a really good trait for saviors. You want to be healed quickly and you want to heal others player, other player quickly as well. So this is a persona build that I would recommend for saviors because you are saving players with tide turner buying more time. You can pick yourself up and you can actually heal other players quickly and they can heal you quickly also so you can go save again. This is a very universal build that will actually help you for saving. So do try this out. Let me know if it is actually helpful to you because it's been really helpful to me. Okay, so I hope these two persona build has been really useful to you guys because let me tell you, in rank I actually use these two builds because I find them to do everything so efficiently. With these two builds, I'm healing a lot faster, I'm stalling more time for my team. It's so efficient, so do try it out yourselves and let me know what you guys think. 
If you guys enjoyed the video or find the build really helpful, remember to leave a like on the video. Let me know in the comment section below on what you think and what you guys would like to see next. Whether it's a gameplay or a guide or whatever you guys want, I don't know unless you guys tell me. So do let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, do subscribe. And I guess that's all because I'll see you guys all next time.